Well, hello and welcome to Raj Sabha TV. You're watching discussion today with your host, Rajat Kane. In this episode, we'll discuss how the government and especially Prime Minister Narendra Modi is leading the reforms in a bid for faster economic recovery. Addressing the virtual 93rd annual convention of FICI, he urged the private sector for enhancing the investment in the agriculture sector, underlining it's been long overdue. The Prime Minister also sought more investment by the industry in India's villages and small towns. Well, straight away to discuss further on this very important issue, we are joined with two important panelists. We are joined with Professor Charan Singh. He is CEO of the eGrow Foundation. Many thanks for joining us, sir. And Mr. A.K. Bhattacharaji, he is Editorial Director from Business Standard. Uh, let me start with you, Bhattacharaji, sir. Uh, what do you make out of the Prime Minister's address at the FIKI, and especially on a day when we have seen IIP numbers showing positive signs? We'll come to IIP numbers later, but first let's begin with Prime Minister's address and the gist of it. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, heartening to see uh, India's Prime Minister reiterating uh, his commitment to the idea of economic reforms mm -hmm. uh, at a time uh, when uh, it is facing a lot of resistance uh, from a section uh, of uh, India society. Okay. Uh, there was uh, this, uh, you know, early affair uh, that uh, uh, given the, 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 the kind of uh, resistance uh, it has seen in the last uh, few weeks, uh, from farmers uh, agitating outside Delhi's borders. But the fact that today at the forum of the industrialists today, he reiterated the government's commitment to pursuing economic reforms is a welcome sign uh, because uh, it is important uh, that the government does not go back on the idea of economic reforms mm -hmm. as it did in, in, in 2015 right. uh, on the question of land reforms. Uh, mm. So the fact that uh, within days of the farmers uh, uh, agitating and continuing to agitate and not accepting uh, the compromise formula that the mm. government had offered, if the prime minister says no, he is committed to reforms, it's a good sign. Mm. The second good sign in my view is that uh, he is uh, also talking about uh, the, the fruits of economic reforms uh, in terms of in terms of higher foreign investment, uh, in terms of uh, uh, he did not mention it categorically because the numbers were not yet available. Uh, he talked about the industrial growth, uh, mm. but 3.6% uh, growth, uh, industrial growth uh, in October is clearly a sign uh, that uh, probably the third quarter uh, of GDP, uh, you will see uh, the kind of positive growth that the Reserve Bank of India is expecting. Uh, what he did not talk about is equally important, is uh, the need to make reforms acceptable to the people. Hmm. In a sense, that so far, the government has done well to continuing the talks with the farmers, continuing talks with those who are opposed to those changes. And I do hope that this spirit of consultation, collaboration, and explaining what the government intends to achieve uh, continues because, after all, reforms thrust from above will likely yield less benefits for the economy than reforms that are accepted uh, as a kind of a consensus measure, even if it means certain compromises which will be unfortunate. But I think reforms with consensus, reforms through cooperation, and reforms through collaboration by making the reforms process right. more transparent through consultation, prior consultation if necessary, are very important. And I would say the manner in which the government intends to continue this dialogue and the talks are, uh, are, should be continued. And uh, if the farmers are opposed to it, every effort should be made to explain that, after all, it is good for the overall farm economy. Uh, if there are some changes that are necessary, they must be brought about. So that would be my preliminary comment uh, at this uh, right, stage. Right, right, right. Well, many thanks uh, for your opening uh, comments, uh, Bhattacharya sir. Let me go to uh, Mr. Professor Charan Singh. Sir, many thanks for joining us. Sir, 
Uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Bhattacharya just mentioned about the reform, litany of reforms to say in several sectors. And as we have seen a fair degree of contraction primarily due to, pan uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic. Now there are signs of economic recovery now. The signs of or the shoots of recovery or at the same time the reforms. What more perhaps industry would have wanted from the government to look forward at a positive growth? Sir. So first of all, I would also like to speak about the Prime Minister's address absolutely, today absolutely, morning. Sir. Please and I on, thought sir. he had given us a complete structure and his mind on the reforms. Uh, he did trace way back from his first lecture uh, from the Red Fort and uh, then the changes that have taken place since then. And he traced them. And as I look at it, mm -hmm. when he said zero... Um, uh, the zero effect thing that where environment should not be affected and zero defect, so the efficiency and production of industry and to the reforms that he has now ushered in the agriculture sector reforms. So my, my mind is that the Prime Minister has come out with a very constructive, mm -hmm. very cogent and sequential set of reforms. Okay. It starts from the reforms way back six years Mm. He has done the industry and the MSMEs. And then he has now moved into the difficult ones, which is the agriculture sector. Mm. So the reforms are beginning to show results over this time. Now the issue is what you have just mentioned, that the pandemic did occur. Nine mm. months have gone by. In the initial times, we had a lockout. And the data which we got for the first quarter the first three months, April, May, and June, was a total washout. The negative growth to the extent of 23-24% was very high. The second set of data which we received, July, August, and September, was far more promising. Things mm -hmm. were looking up, and everybody had a feeling that far more than the pessimist attitude and the pessimist expectations that we had, right. India has done much better than okay. what was being expected. The data which has been released now mm -hmm. on IIP is equally promising. On the manufacturing, yes. you see that 3.5% in October, I think which is a very positive figure. Mm -hmm. What has the government done throughout this pandemic period? I think there are two sets. One is the government has really reformed and taken tough measures that one can ask and a farm loans is in that sequence. The right. other is every few months, they have come out with something, some policy for agriculture, some for MSME, some for industry, some for banking. They brought in the moratorium. This is a pause on the Basel norms, something on the NPAs. So by virtue of doing all these things, the government was giving a clear indicator, a clear signal that the government is right behind the economic ecosystem in the country and the economic agents. So they need to produce, they need to perform. The production-linked incentives is exactly in that direction, showing please produce and we are right behind you. Right. The right. tough reforms that the Prime Minister is used to taking, mm. for example, the GST just before the elections, he has continued in that trend. The farm loans are in that direction. In the morning, he was very clear. If I want to achieve a seamless economy, mm. sectorally not divided, right. and each sector moves into the other, agriculture and industry and then the food processing that sits in within it, each sector has to move seamlessly from one to the other. And that's mm. the point I think he's making in the farm sector, where he said, everybody will benefit, the industry will prosper, with lots of opportunities in the farm sector, right. the farmers will the farmers will benefit because the industry brings in things mm -hmm. which have not been done so far. He's right. In an emerging country like India, where tax to GDP ratio is low, the government only has so much and not everything. If the coal storages have to be built across the length and breadth of the country, and if the farmers who produce vegetables which can become perishable, they have to benefit. Somebody has to invest in cold storages. So the Prime right. Minister spoke about the connectivity, where he said 98% of the villages are now well connected mm. with roads. 
the farm produce can move to anywhere to anywhere in the country but we need to have cold storage to do that and that is where i think his thought process is very transparent and the reforms that he is bringing in are very sequential the last point i want to make mm-hmm. rajit is that when he invited the industry to okay. come and participate in the prosperity of the rural areas and the huge potential there is he spoke about the wifi and he said you know the industry can benefit from this and that mm-hmm. is where i think he is trying to build a 360 degree uh, ecosystem where the country leap from the present situation of the pandemic the pandemic being used as an opportunity rather than feeling pessimist about it and emerging from the pandemic after all these reforms have been set so the country that for 9 months nobody has spoken about the 5 trillion dollar economy and mm-hmm. for after as we evolve and we come out of this i think we need to go back to our dream of achieving a 5 trillion dollar economy that is where the prime minister set his speech today right 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 uh, thanks sir for your opening remarks let me go back to uh, mr ak patishara ji uh, sir you mentioned about the reforms in the agriculture sector well uh, without going into the semantics of uh, of of the agriculture the new farm laws because that's a different debate altogether uh prime minister not just in this convention but prior to that as well and even the cabinet ministers emphasized that reforms in the agriculture was long overdue what does prime minister or this government mean when they say that well i think uh, they were overdue uh, mm-hmm. and as a matter of fact uh, there has been uh, uh, you know a broad based uh, consensus among the, the different governments that have ruled at the center for the last several years if you look at the upa regime mm-hmm. uh, if you look at the first few years of the nda regime right. uh, there have been uh, discussions there have been expert committees uh the famous committee uh, headed by the shanta kumar uh committee right. uh, talked about agriculture reforms uh now what the government has done today uh is uh, implementing some of those recommendations particularly mm-hmm. giving uh, a farmer of a certain area to sell his or her produce right. any part of the world uh relaxing uh, some of the the restrictive conditions of the essential commodities act uh allowing uh, the farmers to sell uh, his or her produce uh not necessarily through the official mandis but through any other mandis that would be designated as such uh, uh so so on so therefore what the the, the government has done uh is uh, to lay out an overall uh, framework of a new agricultural policy regime mm-hmm. by which Uh, not just the farmer but also uh, those who want to uh, enter into uh, a, a kind of an arrangement with the farmers is facilitated right. the kind of uh, the farmer produce organizations that have come up in the country uh, that will get a boost if you allow the the non farmers the non mandi people or the companies to mm. come and buy it the produce from the farmers that has been allowed so the question is all these are very important reforms and i think they will take away a lot of the rigidities and the weaknesses of the indian farming economy mm-hmm. but the question that uh, also needs to be understood and conveyed and propagated in my view which uh, unfortunately has not been done so far is that this is a kind of a reform in my view which happened in the industrial sector mm-hmm. about 30 years ago 1991 right now right. when those reforms happened those reforms did not happen in one day now they mm. were implemented and rolled out with a lot of doubts lot of questions yes. lot yes. of apprehension even among industry so therefore the apprehension that you see right now are in my view legitimate but it is important for the government and other agencies to dispel those apprehensions and explain that there will be enough supervisory regimes regulatory structures within okay. the country by which the the fears of mm. a section of farmers are will be addressed so therefore this this reforms are very important very you know uh, uh, you know overdue reforms as you rightly said mm. but you need a a, a a a kind of an accompanying framework of regulation by which the fears of a section of farmers are addressed and that is what 
is very important. And what will be unfortunate is if these reforms are rolled back or are not implemented. As a matter of fact, some of the, the, the changes that have been proposed, in my view, will mm -hmm. actually dilute some of the positive features okay. of the new agricultural reform laws. Okay. Now, it is important to explain why, why it, is, it, it is important to take away the inspectors from the sale in a mandi. The mm -hmm. moment you unofficial mandis attract the kind of assess or a taxes as is being considered with we, what we understand, you will be reintroducing the inspectors into these unofficial mandis. Okay. Now, who gains and who loses, we all know. So therefore, mm -hmm. it is important to introduce good reforms, uh, uh, long-term reforms, sustainable reforms, mm -hmm. but they will become sustainable only if the accompanying infrastructure is also created and enough communication and 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 uh, you know um, opinion building takes place uh, along with the introduction of these reforms it will be unfortunate if these reforms die an unnatural death it will be unfortunate if these reforms are implemented in a half-hearted way and then people will say these half-hearted reforms are not good enough so you will give the reforms a bad name and 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 hang it I think that will be unfortunate. So it is important to create an important, uh, you know, uh, ecosystem uh, mm. to let the agricultural reforms uh, be implemented in the way it has been uh, intended, and make sure uh, that there is enough accompanying infrastructure and regulatory framework by which the apprehensions right. and the doubts in people's mind right. are addressed. Right, right, right. right. Uh, Professor Charan Singh. Uh, as we as we uh, as we talking about the ecosystem here, the prime minister also emphasised that industry perhaps need to require more on the rural areas and small towns. Now, how much these two index or the factors I would say adds up to the larger vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat or to say the self-reliant India? Look. Uh, as far as I can understand the Prime Minister's mind, mm -hmm. he is addressing multiple issues in this country. Right. One of the issues that needs to be addressed is urbanization. Mm. How much can one have the urbanization? With what level can urbanization be accommodated? Right. All that has to be addressed and understood. So he is taking care of that part by saying, why can't we go into the rural areas and mm -hmm. if you remember a few years back, the urban uh, concept was quite popular. I had also written on the urban concept where you give the facilities to the rural areas, mm -hmm. facilities which are as good or as uh, modern as those in the urban areas. And one of it is the Wi-Fi. So you connect the rural areas with Wi-Fi with the rest of the world. And that opens huge amount of avenues yeah, in yeah, terms yeah. of marketing the produce Mm -hmm. understanding the market, the prices prevailing in different parts of the country and directing your product to that part where it is demanded most. So one on one hand, urbanization is an issue. And if we are able to develop our rural areas, that aspect is taken care. The other is the young demographics. Mm -hmm. Now, given the size of the country and given the age profile of our people, we have to provide them employment. We just can't provide them employment in the government sector. The private sector has to play a role. And mm -hmm. also when we develop these second tier cities and the rural areas where so many, so many of youth are sitting and are available and will become more available when mechanization of agriculture takes place, it's important that they are kept engaged. Mm -hmm. How do you keep them engaged? You have to engage them in productive activities. And that's why you need to open up potential for them. The third is at this point of time, and for a few more years to come, pandemic has impacted the global economy. Our exports are not going to be absorbed by the rich countries or the developed countries as they were in the past. How do we take care of growth in these circumstances? Mm. So what the Prime Minister seems to be hinting at, that there's lots of potential of growth in the hinterlands of our country. If we are able to give our farmers the market price of the product and the right price for their product, their purchasing power improves. Where will they use their purchasing power? They will use their purchasing power to buy industrial goods. Mm -hmm. And that is why he says little, little blocks that come in between different markets 
agriculture right. and industry totally segmented has now to be watertight compartments have mm-hmm. to go we right. have to have agriculture we have to have industry and then we have to have the food processing which brings the two together mm-hmm. now in case these three things which i think he is trying to address the urbanization the, the the demographic aspect right and then uh, the uh, rural part the export thing if he is addressing these three major issues then the only way possible is that the public and private sector go shoulder in shoulder help each other in developing the country now the potential mm-hmm. is not only in the rural areas as i see in second tier cities it is also there in some pockets like northeast which mm-hmm. is on the radar of the government and they have been talking about it right. and i think the country the size of a continent just imagine in europe there is one germany and france and then so many other countries mm-hmm. but in india we have all the states which are as good and as strong and as dynamic as any other country you can imagine we have the industrial states of gujarat and maharashtra we have a beautiful coastline and well developed seaports there we mm. have the virgin areas of northeast there is so much of potential within the country and what the prime minister seems to be hinting in his speech today that look within yourself when he says local and vocal about being local mm-hmm. that's the point i think he is making we have the potential to produce because we have the technology the point that he made on digital i think was very very interesting very said at one point of time people thought india is not very indians are not very educated how will the digital thing work and he said today is a day we touch dizzy heights in e transaction yeah now i did surveys in bangalore in tumkur area about 100 miles away from bangalore and this is before the jandan and after the jandan and mm. some parts of andhra and i can tell you even the elderly 67 8 70 80 years old women were telling me you know we can do the transaction on the phone mm. can somebody teach us how to do it that is rural india there is potential there is urge to learn and there is urge to take the advantages of modernizing india if this is where india is the prime minister is pointing out let's do it together he is inviting the private sector to take part in the prosperous prosperity story of the rural areas connectivity provided road connectivity provided wifi provided mm-hmm. market value of the produce now being discussed that is where the money is right 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 well absolutely uh, thanks uh, professor charan singh for this elaborate explanation uh, to you uh, um, mr ekin patacharya ji uh, amid all the synergies what professor charan singh was telling us about the urbanization about the demographic mix and opportunities and of course the regional opportunities at the same time the positivities that we can draw from our geographical domain amid all these possibilities do you still see any challenges or rather something that industry or for that matter governments needs to address for achieving the economic recovery or to say faster economic recovery yes um, i think uh, uh, the good news is uh, that the the prime minister's faith in reforms hmm. and most importantly faith in the private sector and the, and its role in bringing about faster growth and better distribution of the benefits of the growth among the people of the country have not been shaken as yet which is a positive sign mm-hmm. because we need a country where reforms and the role of the private sector in uh, reaping the benefits of those reforms are continuing to remain intact that's a very very positive sign having right. said that it is also important to understand the importance of building the kind of muscles mm-hmm. to help reforms spread its benefits across sections uh, digital india is one clear example that if digital india has to succeed it must ha- it must succeed on the strength of a strong infrastructure backbone strong mm-hmm. bandwidth across the country which is accessible to all and i am not not just talking about the digital infrastructure i am talking about the physical infrastructure where you need renewal of roads renewal of bridges construction of airports now all these areas will actually help build infrastructure in a manner that the benefits of those reform measures can be fully be reaped the second important point it is important that and the government has been harping on this quite uh, quite uh, regularly which is how do you improve 
the ease of doing business in this country. Now, the ease of doing business uh, will improve not just by reforms, but also by, by uh, changing the, the legal framework of the country. For example, enforcement of contracts. Now, the enforcement of legal contracts is a very important issue. How the private industry, which is being welcomed and invited into taking up ventures, has the comfort of a sound and uh, 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 legal framework by which a contract that is entered into, mm -hmm. which is between the two parties, is enforced quickly, expeditiously, right. and without uh, being unfair to any party. So therefore, you need infrastructure, you need enforcement of contracts, and you need the, right. the, the, the divide uh, uh, between uh, the, those who have the infrastructure and those who don't have the infrastructure that divide to be eliminated. So I think these are very right, important sir. challenges and it, it is and it will be good to have the reforms, have growth right, right. and along with that, have these infrastructure support to further the, the benefits that you will get from growth. Well, on that note, sir, many thanks. Uh, we have to leave. Uh, I know it's a, it's, it's a debate where we could have discussed more, but um, I'm afraid we're short on time. Thank, many thanks, uh, Mr. Bhattacharjee, for joining us. Many thanks, Professor Charan Singh, for joining us and throwing a light upon what Prime Minister said and what exactly is required for India so as to achieve the faster economic recovery. Well, many thanks for joining us and watching this edition of Discussion Today. Thank you. Goodbye.